Hi and welcome to my video. Today I'm doing molding and I am using the Iron Orchid designs that I bought recently. They have got six different designs. I've got three on my desk right now. You can see the top one I have already started pouring um, but I ran out of polyurethane so um, I'm going to continue with that one now. And um, I posted in the Fenabear group and in the South African group um, my recent make that I did using the polyurethane and then I painted with Finnebear's rust paste and everybody loves it and I've had a few questions some people want to know if I'm using polymer clay or um, paper clay and actually no the answer is I'm using polyurethane and um, you can see it's really shiny at the back you can see my desk light reflecting in it it is um, plastic it is a two-part mix and um, it's I get it locally from a South African company called AMT they are um, come focus 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 camera focus there yes thank you AMT composites they are found at www.amtcomposites.co.za they're in Johannesburg Durban and Cape Town so um, I'm using what's called smooth cast I'm holding part B right now and um, it comes in a part A and a part B part A is yellow and um, you need 100 parts of part A to 90 parts of part B if you're working in grams, which I will be doing. And um, yeah, I like to wear gloves just so I don't get it on me because Murphy will have it that I will get the stuff all over me if I don't have gloves on. I very seldom mess, but you know, Murphy and me, we're not friends. So um, I'm going to go with the gloves. Right. I use a little tiny scale. Um, sorry, just getting it to focus again. And I use mini paper cups. So I'm going to zero that. And I'm going to pour 20 grams of part A. Okay, now you need to start going slower. 20.2, that's fine. And let's get in 18 grams that so I'm going to have to go for, um, let's see, 38. I'm going to aim at 38. Um, oh, not bad. Okay, there we go. I must say the stuff is fairly forgiving. You don't have to be absolutely, absolutely bang on accurate. You probably should be, but um, I found it to be okay. Now it starts off clear. You saw it clear in the as it was pouring in. Let me just get this out the way. And um, yeah, you just mix. Make sure that the two parts are mixed really, really well. And um, that you can't see any little, um, what I call swirls inside the mixture. It's very hard for you guys to see on camera. But I can see over the top of the camera. And that looks pretty good. I always go around the edge, make sure I've wiggled my stick all the way along the bottom. The thing is you can't work this too long because the more volume there is, the quicker it'll set um, because this stuff goes off on heat. And um, so yeah, I just didn't quite finish pouring that one. So I'm going to pour, finish pouring this one while I've got so much in my cup. I'm going to pour another one of these because I rather like them. And as I've got less in my cup and I can control it a little bit better... I'm just going to push, you see why I needed gloves, push some in there. Okay, what else do I like in here? This one's beautiful. Well, they're all beautiful. It's hard not to love them all. Um, okay, and I think you guys can see across here. Now, the bigger the mold, the thicker the mold, the faster it starts to set. I can feel the cup already starting to get warm. Um, the stuff gets pretty hot. And... Um, so you have to be careful. Okay, I've now pretty much run out. Pop that over there. And um, while I'm talking to you, you'll see that it goes from clear to white. And it'll start going white in the thickest part of the mold. So um, while that is setting up, I'm going to show you the paints that I used. 
and I used Finnebear's Rust Paste and it comes in three colors. It comes in the red rust, in brown rust and gold rust. So these three colors are what I used on that piece I showed you just now. I'm going to pop them over there and um, I'm going to grab a random piece and start painting for you here in the foreground. Let's just slide this gently out the way. Okie dokie. Right, I always start with the red rust and the paint has a really nice sandy consistency and that is what gives you the feeling of the rust. You can use any brush. I'm using a smooth brush. I don't know if you can see in the camera the texture. And what I do is I put it on with a dabbing motion to try and, or a wiggle like so, to get into all the crevices and make sure you get all your edges as well. So this is what I always use as the base coat for the whole item. I suppose it depends on what um, project you're doing. You might want the brown rust as the whole item and then this one just for the accents. But I quite like working with this one as the base. Right, so now that I've got that well and truly covered, and of course where my great big thumb was, it's taken some paint off. Um, I'm going to close that one. And start with the brown rust and you can see that that one also has a sandy consistency um, it's got wonderful texture in it and um, I apply this darker in some areas than others and because the base coat is wet the colors blend which is rather nice um, oops taking it off with my great big finger again so you want some of the brown of the previous red rust showing through, but I found it's quite nice if you really get it on thick in some places and less in other places. It makes the piece more interesting because rust, if you have a car that's rusted or a roof that's rusted or something that's rusted, rust isn't uniform. It doesn't conform to any rules other than its own and then the yellow the gold rust is quite a thin consistency it also has some texture to it but it's a very very fine texture so this one I put on sparingly and I use my brush that's now split a little bit grab some on there and I apply small amounts of it now I find that when the paint is wet it's quite pale and the colors are quite bright um, but as it dries it definitely definitely dries darker so um, that is how I get my rust effect and um, yeah you can see as I've been talking and as I've been working that these molds in the background are now starting to set so um, it's setting from the center out because the center is obviously where it's thicker in these particular molds and um, the fiddly bits as I call them these little skinny bits are going to be the last to set so once they've all set and gone completely white then you can pull them out of the molds I found with these molds that um, they're particularly good quality that um, your molds come out really really easily especially using this polymer um, it's not polymer clay sorry um, using the um, smooth cast polyurethane and as I showed you earlier the back of the one piece um, the polyurethane comes out really really shiny but if I turn it over you'll see that it's got a nice matte finish on the side and it's almost um, got a velvety feel to it and it's a really nice quality so most paints seem to adhere to these molds beautifully and I've done a couple of experiments with some paints that I've got and um, I'm just using a local metal craft paint by Dala and um, I tried it on this piece just straight onto the white polyurethane 
and it's kind of transparent it would need a few coats um, I can still see my brush strokes at this stage so as an experiment I then used a base of their blackboard paint um, on on the same pieces and then I used the same gold metal paint over the top and you can see that it really took beautifully so this piece here on the right has the black chalkboard paint underneath and this piece has nothing underneath with the same color on top so this is what I do folks I experiment I push boundaries I taste things because I know that Finnebears paint um, her beautiful acrylic paint works really really well um, for coverage so I'm just going to grab while those pieces are setting up so I can pull them out for you I'm going to grab another one and um, just going to show you using Finn's paint how beautifully it paints so I'm just going to grab another paintbrush and just paint for you the coverage is amazing with Finn's paint it really does you only need one coat with the stuff I have found on these particular molds and don't forget when you're doing something like this to always do the edges so I quite often work with two colors to give this piece a bit of interest wiggle into all those beautiful details and um, yeah you can see I'm not applying it very thick and the coverage is absolutely amazing and I am so chuffed with these because I'm pretty much a mixed media artist and um, so I'm always looking for different textures different colors different ways of embellishing my projects and my pieces and so I'm really excited about these and the different paints and the different ways I can use them. I can see that these molds are nearly nearly set they've got still a bit of a transparent look to them you can see this one that was already in the mold over here it has a far whiter look the little bit that I touched up over there is still setting um, it's autumn here and it's cold so I find in summer these things set a lot faster um, but I can see the one at the back there it's pretty much ready to take out so quickly while we're on camera I'll grab that one out for you um, oh I can see its edges are quite soft still um, nope not quite ready to come out so it doesn't take long I've been recording now for 13 minutes so I would say on average they take about 10 to 15 minutes to be ready to come out of the molds and um, because it's plastic you can heat them with a heat gun to um, soften them again if you want to no that's still not quite ready you can heat them with a heat gun if you want to bend them so say for example I want this one to bend around a hat or a mug or something you just give it a blast on both sides with your heat gun you'd be able to flex it around your object hold it there till it cools and then it'll hold its shape it's pretty awesome and um, yeah I really love using this stuff for the overseas people who might watch this video I'm sorry I have no idea um, who you would go to for something like this polyurethane um, I know that this is a local brand so I'm sure that you must have companies overseas that also manufacture something similar um, but I just find that this is the most successful stuff that I have put into my mold so far um, I've also tried Ranger's UT that works well too um, okay let's have one quick try oh still not quite set up come on come on okay let's try let's try the smaller one okay that one looks like it's gonna come out yep there we go and out it pops how stunning is that really really stunning so much detail and they paint up beautifully thanks for watching bye